Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions, generally related to wealth building commodities and or financial topics. Uh, so we'll just dive right in, take a look and see what's going on. Uh, if you wanna follow me at Finance Score Finance and if you wanna join our community, finding-value.com, I dive deeper into all these things, looking for investment opportunities, uh, in individual companies, looking at risk reward, dividend payouts. Um, I do like a lot of dividend companies uh, and I'm also looking for ultimate growth. Uh, I do also look at speculative companies, do weight those a little bit differently. Uh, Mayday coupon code is still active, 25% uh, off the first month and only the first month uh, on the monthly membership. And a larger discount on the yearly membership uh, if anyone wants to switch from a monthly to a yearly, or you can sign sign up directly to a yearly uh, if you'd like. So I've got urea ammonium nitrate, uh, UAN, uh, overlaid on top of natural gas. And there is a definite, looks to me like a definite correlation there. Uh, natural gas is in the pink, red, however you want to call it there. Uh, and then in the background, the white is UAN which is the chemicals, synthetic ammonia, nitric acid, and ammonium compounds in urea. Uh, so I do think that we are probably close to a bottom in natural gas. Therefore, we are probably close to a bottom in the fertilizer at some point here, uh, if natural gas does bottom. And there are investment opportunities around both of these. Uh, with natural gas, as low as it is, it's a definite opportunity. Uh, and, and same with the fertilizers. Uh, the S&P 500 to gold ratio. Uh, so this ratio here, you can see it swing back and forth, uh, up and down. And the, the big thing here, guys, that, that everyone should try to figure out is you want to ride stocks on the way up and you want to ride commodities when this is expensive on the way down to these bottoms. Right now, we're at a very high level. So incredibly high level in 2000. This was a great time to buy the crap out of gold uh, because this is the S&P 500 to gold ratio. You want to buy it when it's cheap. Another really good time to buy gold uh, was the late 60s, early 70s, uh, clear as day. So you could have bought, them, you could have bought, bought the entire bottom here. Uh, even if you were early in gold, it doesn't matter. Gold went from $35, $36, $37, $38 an ounce at this bottom here all the way to a peak of $850 an ounce. Absolute killer return on something that has very little risk. Uh, another thing here is silver was about a dollar around this area. And that went all the way to $50, uh, $50 a, an ounce. Uh, another huge winner. And for the risk that people were taking in physical metals, I, I just see that as a no brainer. Um, you can see that. We also had that same opportunity. It bottomed in the year 90, 98, 99, 2000 in that general area. Uh, and we had a bottom, I think it was like 200 and something dollar gold in the bottom and uh, three, four dollars silver. I can't remember the exact bottom in silver. Uh, but that that obviously went all the way to 50 bucks for silver uh, at this 2011 peak and $2,000 gold. Uh, so 10X on gold there and a uh, pretty big move uh, over about a, over a 10x on on silver, we've squeezed on up here on this rising wedge, uh, and I do think this will break to the downside. Uh, that would be my uh, my guess. Um, the reason I would guess that is because of the market conditions. Uh, think of inflation uh, and and the slowing of the market. So whenever you get into these inflationary periods and there is a slowing in the market, that's when gold advances. That's when gold advanced in the 70s as well. Um, we had two big advances in gold. Uh, the big advance here was in the early 70s, um, like 73, 4, 5, whenever that recession was. And then we had another one towards the middle. Uh, two large advances, and those advances occurred when the real estate market was busting. Uh, so the safe haven trade 
still worked in the 70s. Uh, and, and here on the right hand side, uh, we could see a potential slowdown with the yield curve inverted and then having it uninvert and the unemployment rate going up. So that would be reason for the S&P 500 to underperform gold. Those are the, the, the market conditions behind a potential move that we could see here. And some people are speculating that we could get below uh, one uh, as a ratio uh, and go all the way back down to a very low level. Uh, XOP to GDX ratio and GDX to XOP ratio. I'm just flipping these things around. Uh, and this is the big kind of uh, up and down movement. So uh, the bottom here for uh, GDX being expensive is down here. Uh, you want to buy XOP. As it goes up, you want to sell your XOP and buy GDX. It goes all the way down. Now, we're kind of in the middle here. And I'll be honest, I don't know which direction this is going to go in the short term. A lot of people say that GDX is going to outperform. Uh, that very well could for a period of time. But overall, I still think uh, XOP could go up a lot against GDX and go back to these levels uh, way up here. <clears throat> very well could. Uh, but it, right now, we're kind of in the middle. And I would say it's slightly cheap for XOP, but the market conditions in the short term, I think, favor GDX. So sometimes when you look at these, it might be favorable to flip the ratio GDX to XOP. You can see there's a trend line going through here. Uh, and that does look like we could extend upward where GDX could outperform XOP. But uh, when looking at XOP, uh, I'm not sure that that has broken down yet uh, and that uh, we, were, we are for surely going to underperform. I'm, I'm just going to wait and see is what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the oil to NASDAQ ratio. I got a couple of oil ratios here. Uh, so here's the bull market in the NASDAQ when the ratio uh, outperforms. That turned in 1999, which is also uh, the commodity to stock ratio bottom. Then you should have went long in oil uh, and stayed long in oil all the way to the peak of 2008. That was the bull market in oil. Uh, that reversed in 2008 at the bottom there, and then NASDAQ outperformed. This area here is an expansion phase of real estate. This area behind it, uh, there were some expansion phases of real estate, depending where you were located. Uh, like this move here was a bull market for uh, commodities. It was very short-lived, and then it came back down. Uh, right now, I would say that we are also entering an expansion phase of real estate, which we're in, uh, and we're in a bull market for oil. You can see that we have bottomed and are starting to work our way on up against the NASDAQ composite index. And we are squeezing into this corner here. Uh, so we're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Uh, you can see most recently this could be a false breakout where we slingshot to the upside for crude oil. Uh, but that, again, I'm waiting to see if that actually occurs. The reason I'm waiting is because I know the yield curve, if it uninverts, we get a slowdown that could impact oil. It may not. So I'm continuing to watch it and say, okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, oil is cheap to gold. Uh, we're at a 34 to one ratio. So one ounce gold, 34 barrels of oil. That's historically really cheap. Uh, but just because something's cheap doesn't mean that it can't get cheaper, especially given where the market conditions are at in terms of unemployment rate and also uh, the yield curve potentially uninverted. So I'm watching this and, and it's, I don't know, I, I haven't given up on oil yet uh, in the short term. Uh, longer term, oil's looking fantastic. Uh, this is oil to gold ratio here. So this is another one where we've got a one, two, three consolidation and then the move higher uh, for that bull market in terms of crude oil outperforming gold. We made a couple of like a double top here. We got that Batman pattern almost. Uh, and then we had another three hump consolidation coming down with a false breakout down here in 2020. We've broken out of the pattern to the upside of crude oil versus gold. And we are consolidating again uh, in this one hump, two hump, three hump consolidation. Sometimes we get a, a false breakdown move before a slingshot higher. That very well could occur. Uh, and here it is kind of zooming in on that right hand area at the tip. 
Uh, so we very well could get that slingshot drawdown. Uh, he's saying it on the side there too, where we could get a slingshot move. Uh, where in the next six months, maybe we get a little bit of a slowdown, maybe not. It, it's difficult to say, uh, and, and it's very obvious when looking backwards with 2020 vision. Um, another thing, looking at oil, I just, I'm going to pull up something in Trading View here. Uh, so this is Trading View here, uh, and this is oil. Uh, and there's your price on the right. So this is what oil looks like on a long term basis. Uh, the consolidations are when the housing market and inflation are kind of tame. Uh, and then when we go to the expansion phases where you have large credit expansion, it pushes oil prices higher. Uh, it deals with a weaker dollar. Consolidation, breakout, consolidation, uh, breakout. Now, the structure here makes it look very obvious to me. Uh, so when I look at some of these things, and we can do uh, a little bit of analysis on this. So when you, when you get these structures, uh, this is basically a cycle. Uh, so this here is a cycle, and you can see uh, it's the breakout <clears throat> and then the consolidation, which looks like that. Uh, and I'm, I'm just moving it around so you guys can see the cycle and how this cycle plays out. That's the cycle there. And then the cycle repeats. This here is the fractal of that guy there. I just overlaid it uh, on top of it, and that projects to hit the top of this channel that I've got drawn in there and projects a move to $583 a barrel. Oh, but that's too expensive. I don't, I don't know. Um, I can also take the other previous cycle, uh, which is there, overlay it on top of this. Uh, and if that, without touching it, that gets us somewhere in the $350 a barrel range. So I think 350 to 600 is very well uh, a good potential top uh, where that could occur. And that's what I think we've got in oil is this upward uh, area. You can also see three distinct waves. One, it goes one, pull back, the third wave, pull back for the fourth, and then the fifth wave. So that's your, your waves there. So we've got one wave, pull back, third wave, pull back, and then a fifth wave. Uh, and we could get somewhere up in that range there. Uh, so that's what I see for oil. Uh, and then you can see the consolidation uh, and, and how that has worked over time. Uh, we also have the correct market conditions for this to occur under uh, a big move. So uh, if shale oil does kind of roll over here, uh, that would be your supply constraint. The majority of this supply um, abundance here came from shale oil. I think it's something like 90% of the oil growth came from United States shale oil. And if that rolls over, well, that's going to give you the, uh, the runway to the upside or oil to hit those levels that we were just talking about there in the multi hundred dollar level. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of investments around this um, move here. Uh, we don't even have to really move from where we're at today. Uh, there's energy service companies that are making a lot of money. Uh, I think they'll make more in the future, obviously, if oil prices go up. And then some of the exploration production companies have, with, with long reserve life uh, are paying dividends. They're buying back shares. And I just think it's an incredible opportunity uh, with where oil is here. Now, I could say if we do get a slowdown, there's a possibility that we get a pullback before the slingshot higher. That's what we're talking about, that slingshot as if the slowdown here does have an impact on the price of oil, which it very well could. Coming back, so here's the two-year yield and 10-year yield in oil price. Uh, so the two-year yield, we've come on down, and it looks like we've got a falling wedge that's breaking to the upside. So maybe we've got a little bit of upside uh, move in yields in the short, short term. Uh, the 10-year is already moving up off that consolidation there, that falling wedge. Uh, and then oil price is also consolidating here, too, with the three hump consolidation. Uh, maybe we go higher. Maybe we break higher and yields go back up. Uh, difficult, difficult call here with the inverted yield curve. Uh, we've got gold and silver that have been ripping it. Well, gold's been ripping it for a little while since October of 2022 on that bottom there. So 
yeah, we'll see what happens in oil. This is one I'm watching. Uh, here's investment wisdom. He says, a mistake that people often make is they compare themselves with others who are making more money than they are and conclude that they should emulate the other's actions after they've worked. This is the herd behavior that so often gets them in trouble, uh, Howard Marks. So if you're, you don't want to chase price because someone else is in a different stock that's working, uh, you want to chase value. You want to chase chart patterns. You want to chase the things that are down. Uh, and you don't want to emulate others after they've worked. That means that maybe the move is already done and that value has been realized already uh, in that stock move. Henrik Zaberg says, what is it? It says, what is it analysts and the Fed do not see? Unemployment rate moves up. Fed tries to ensure a soft landing by cutting Fed funds rate. Around the first rate cut, S&P 500 and equities top and a bear market begins. Recession is coming and due to Fed being very, very late, the deflationary impulse will be extra strong. But first to blow off top, in his opinion. Well, that's what the Fed rate cuts are, and he thinks that the unemployment rate could go up, and that very well could be a recession there. It could. Um, there's a couple of things that are behind this that we didn't get in some of these other areas. We've got we've got seven eight percent fiscal spending here, guys, and that could distort some of this because uh, I don't think we've had a recession with spending that high. Um, anything above three percent. I don't know if we've had a recession. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what this looks like. And obviously things look crystal clear looking backwards. But um, he could be right. He very well could be right. Uh, and this one is, say it with me, coal. And this is implied coal demand in China. Uh, you can see every single year it's been going up and up and up and up. 2023 is the orange line. 24, you can see we're making new all-time highs at least in June. Uh, 2022 is the bluish greenish line. And then 2021 is the yellow line. So we have higher and higher coal demand in China uh, with time. I thought coal demand was going to go down. And we're going to use all these renewables, but that's not the case. I uh, said so you could probably retire in financial comfort at age 45 if you have $3 million in savings. For smart asset, do you agree? Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. Because if if you get, uh, let's say ten percent uh, returns, uh, or even less, but ten percent would give you three hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, if you had three million invested with an average yield of ten percent, uh, if that ten percent is five percent, then you'd have one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. And if you're married. I think if those, if it's coming from dividends, I think the first ninety five thousand you pay zero percent taxes. So yeah, you could do very well um, and and be very comfortable in my opinion. Uh, obviously, that might rely on some things that uh, you need to do to prep yourself for it because you know having three million in that type of income and if you own a home where you don't have those large um, you know, a mortgage payment or anything like that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you just have maintenance costs, uh, property taxes, and then obviously you're going to have something probably on the lines of like uh, medical insurance, dental insurance, if, if you even need dental insurance, but medical insurance for sure. Uh, so those are, the, those are the costs there. Uh, and, and that's where I'm going to end it, guys. That's what we've got for today. So give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, subscribe to the website if you guys like. Uh, we did have a question and answer session uh, on Saturday, and that's posted on the website if you want to see it. Uh, but that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.